welcome to The Benita Show. I am Benita. I am a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and the pastor's wife of an amazing congregation. I'm so happy that you joined me today. So I want you to stay tuned because we're gonna be looking at some ministry moments, some powerful moments that I know will bless you. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Watch Benita on demand. Subscribe on YouTube at The Benita Talk Show. Catch season one and more of season two. We, are, we have consecrated ourselves several times within our marriage where um, I remember when you, um, when you were laid off of your job right. and we had a young family, a young growing family, and you had applied for a mortgage when you were working and we got denied when you were working the job and you were working a very good job. Okay. You were in management, so you were working a great job and you came home, it was right after the Lord called you to, uh, to pastor and Shortly after that, you were laid off, and you called me and said, I'm laid off. We had to go into a level of consecration. We were that. already staying in... in um, P85 Westfield. We were staying in, in campus. No. Uh, actually, we had moved uh, we were, to... At Randolph Hawkins. Court. We were at Randolph. We were at Randolph Court. So we were, we were there praying because we knew we needed to move. We were having children, sure. and we knew that we needed to move. Um, and we tried to get a house, and we couldn't. We couldn't, and we went into a level of consecration because we needed larger living quarters. But here we were with the growing family, having children, and not having enough space, and not really, um, you know, understanding what our next move was going to be and what it could be. It couldn't be because you were laid off and you were starting the ministry. So we went into consecration, and I remember one day vividly we were praying. We were praying that the Lord would bless us with a home. And the Lord, uh, through that consecration, he revealed to me while you were out looking for work, while Bishop was out looking for work, that to grab the one ads. And I grabbed the Ypsilanti Press. I never will forget it. I sat at my little raggedy wicker table and uh, the chair was about to break. I can't, I can't forget that. It was just about to break everything. Our furniture, the furniture was the dude. So I took that paper. I sat out at that table. These, these folks don't know nothing about no wicker furniture today. That, that's wicker, old school. Anybody has some wicker furniture before? <laughs> and you know when it started getting weak, it started getting loose. And so you have to brace yourself. But I sat, I sat down and I grabbed uh, Ypsilanti Press and the Lord said, go grab a Sharpie marker. That's right. And I sat at that table and through my consecration, he was giving me instruction. He said, okay, look down there, I was reading. And he said, take that. this marker and I want you to it's circle crazy. this house. That's crazy. Those are crazy instructions. Yeah, so crazy. I circled it and when you came back looking, uh, after looking for, for a job that day, I said, honey, I said, the Lord told us to go look at this house. That's right. And your immediate response was, you know what, I'm not working right now. I That's said, right. but it was through our consecration that the Lord said, go and just check it out. So we went and checked out the house. And when we got there, the house was a brand new mm. construction. That's right. And the crazy part about it was, was that I was looking at a house that was similar to it and my heart was crushed, couldn't afford it, but I was feeding my faith. I was That's driving right. up from my parents' house and there was a house that was being newly constructed by West Middle School. And I, was, I said, that's my house, that's my house. I was riding by that house every day claiming it, not having a dime to buy it. But that's my house, that's my house. And then I drove by one day and they sold the house. I remember that. So I was like, oh, that's gone. But then this day, the Lord says, grab a newspaper. Ypsilanti Press. A Ypsilanti Press and That's a right. Sharpie marker and That's circle right. this house, who circle another house. Who buys an <laughs> Ypsilanti Press and look for a house? <laughs> and then I... Um, Except people that are <laughs> consecrated. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to the house. We went to the house and it was a brand new house. And it looked just like the house that was just sold like. that I was devastated over that I didn't have money to afford. But I felt like God was feeding my faith. 
So we went and looked at the house, met the owner, walked in the house, and the house was a bi-level, beautiful home. Beautiful home. Um, and you looked at the owner. He asked you, he says, do you want the house? And you said, it's not a matter of do I want the house. It's if I can afford the house. Sir, sure. you don't understand. We're just here on a joy ride. We just, we just looking. That's right. That's right. I don't have a job. I told the man, so, I, I told the man, I said, man, I don't have a job. Man. Yeah. And he says, I didn't ask you that. He sure did. He Strange. said, I asked you, did you want this house? He asked me if I wanted that house. So. Come on, talk to me now. You, you, you. Long story short, mm. he handed us the keys to the house. Two days later, it was our house. That's right. Y'all can praise him. That's right. Hallelujah! Because I believe God has given somebody a house right now Come in on, the sister. audience and on this. Hallelujah! This if line. you can praise Him, He's changing your place of residence. That's so right. consecration, That's right. consecration. It was because we had consecrated before the Lord. We moved in that house, and that house was was my what my dream house at the time because I was devastated from what had happened before, but through consecration, not through. So what's happening now through a level of consecration, the Lord will give you things that you can't even afford. Come on, sister. The Lord can I mean, provide. Baby. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, the baby. Lord can provide for you. Talk. Through consecration, yeah. he, will, he will tell you what to do and how to do it. Well, that, that, that's exactly what the scripture, the scripture says. says. It, it, says, it says, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. Hallelujah. The Lord will do Amazing, amazing things for you. Yes. Amazing things for you. Hallelujah. And that was absolutely amazing. Yes, it was. Because the house, the first house we tried to buy. Tried to buy it. When I, when I was working, they denied us. And we were devastated. devastated. But then the house that God gave us, which was your dream house at the time, they gave it to us without a job. Without a down payment. Yes. And it was brand spanking new. Brand new. That's amazing. Amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Amazing. And one of the reasons why um, this generation is, is, is missing out on the amazing, wondrous blessings of God. The Hallelujah. blessings that will blow your mind. Yes. You know, the blessings that, 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 that will um, cancel out what you don't have. Um, because of what you do have, Hallelujah. which is your level of consecration. Yes. All right. And, and, and that level of consecration will always give you the edge. Always. It's, it's, it's one of the tools, the weapons of our warfare. It's not counted. As I stated, it is a weapon. A weapon. It is a weapon. Even this church right here, this, this is a beautiful church. Yes. Um, and, and the level of consecration, this church was bought with a level of consecration. God spoke to me. Yes, he um, did. And, 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 and I told you, after I got off my knees in prayer, after I got Lord, off my knees and prayed, said, what did if, I say? He said, if we were going to lunch, and you said, what if the say? Lord gives me a church, if he drops a church in my lap in Wayne County, I'm taking it. I, I said, if it's and in I Wayne County, up, I said, I'm, And I'm, I looked over at him, I said, street. where did that come from? It came through consecration. Came through because consecration. the next we, day. No, no, no we, were, we were, at the time, the, the church was in consecration. We were in consecration. We, it, it, was, it, it was our consecration month. Yes, it was. And we were fasting and praying. And a lot of people, even when you have consecration time, consecration month, you know, churches, a lot of churches, um, January, February, um, October, mm -hmm. you know, um, harvest time, people consecrate during those months. But a lot of the saints, a lot of the saints, they just get complacent. They don't even consecrate. Hmm. They, 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 they jump, they praise, you know, they come to church, but they ain't turning the plate upside down. Wow. They're, not, they're not denying Same nothing picture. during that time. Yes. They don't understand about the Kairos moment, yeah. the set time from, from heaven into earth to cause those things that be not to become. Mm. All right, and, and they don't grab hold to that because because of the thing that is the greatest hindrance to consecration, and that is that is carnality. Wow. See, carnality um, will rob you of your consecration, and carnality will cause you to miss out on those amazing things, on those wondrous works. Um, um, I want to I want to I want I want to pull up another scripture for time's sake. I'm going to kind of. Um, you know, cut through the chase and, and kind of get to the point. Um, I want you to go to, to Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7, verse number 13. 
All right, Joshua chapter 7, verse number 13. But before you read that, um, I, I want to I talk about consecration briefly from this perspective, that consecration requires time. Oh, yeah. It requires time. And um, when you consecrate yourself, you're going to have to be willing to sacrifice your time. That's why a lot of people don't consecrate. Yeah. Uh, because they don't want to sacrifice their time. They don't want to sacrifice their day. They don't want to sacrifice their activities. They don't want to sacrifice, you know, their pleasures. Mm -hmm. and, and consecration will require you to give up those things yeah. for your consecration. All right? And, and then um, um, when, you, when you look at consecration, it also um, entails um, a, a very difficult challenge for the people of God because um, when you consecrate, yourself um your your flesh your flesh is going to fight against you all right your, your your flesh is going to come against your level of consecration your carnality um is is going to be even more exposed yeah. and and you're going to have to bring that carnality into subjection i stated earlier how you got to break up that fallow ground and yes. um you know how you got to be willing to be alone. One of the problems with, with, with this day is people, people don't want to be alone. You know, they don't, they don't want to spend time alone with God. Wow. You know, they don't, they don't want to steal away with God. Matter, matter of fact, that's boring for a lot of people. Hmm. <laughs> you know, it's boring. Now, they don't mind praying in a big group. Wow. They don't mind praying with a lot of people. They don't mind even fasting as long as it's a corporate fast. You know, but when it when it comes time for it's when it's just them and God, and that is that is a sure sign. A lot of times, you know, that the love relationship between God and man is not where it needs to be. Yes. You know that that the connection between heaven and earth is not where it needs to be because you can't spend no time alone. I love you so much. I love you, I love you Benita. Until I love you. Um, my greatest joy is when I'm alone with you. Yes, my, my greatest joy is when I'm alone. And the same thing ought to be when you're in love with God. Thank you, Jesus. Your, your greatest joy ought to be not when you come to church with 500, 700, 1,000 people. And that's good because that fellowship strengthens us. Mm -hmm. But your greatest joy ought to be when it's, when it's me and him. Yes. You know, when, when uh, all by myself, and, 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 and I enjoy being with, with, with God, with you, sweetheart, yes. but I really enjoy being with you. Remember <laughs> one day I told you, um, yeah, I Ooh, think, I think you feelings. got a little hurt. It hurt my but feelings. How, how, how did I hurt you, sweetie? Tell it. Go, go Ooh, tell the camera how I hurt you. It hurt my feelings. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? We were in at a meeting, at at a, a meeting. And, and Bishop was, you were in the room, and Amber and, and I left to go get some tacos. Yeah. And when we came back, he says, you know what? That was the best time I ever had being alone by myself. I said, what? <laughs> what? He, he was there for a couple hours. He I said, but I, I, I had a good time. I he told said, you I was you alone with God. He said, let me tell you something. I was alone with God by myself. And my, my little feelings were so hurt because I had never heard him say that before. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard him tell me that before. Let me tell you something. Come here. But, um, but I understood. I understand. I understand now. I didn't understand then, but I understand now. I got a greater but, understanding. But, but honey, I was like, what? No, no, but honey, sweetie. No, no sweetie. No, I love you, girl. I love you. I love you. But, you know I but, love but you. sweetie, um, you know what I thank God for, though? Hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm 58 years old. I, 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 I've been in the church all of my life. Don't know, I really don't know anything else but church. I was born. In the church, my mama had me in her womb, bringing me to church. Bringing you to church. All right, that's all I know is the church. I gave my life to Jesus Christ for real at 15 years of age. For real, I gave my life to Christ at 15. And here I am now, 58 years on earth, saved yes. for 43 years, living for God. And I still love to be alone with him. That it hasn't, it hasn't gotten old to me. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I've, I've, I've always prayed. And, and there was a season in my life, you know, when I got so bombarded with stuff. And, and I was, you know, I, I, 
was just kind of going through. And, you know, I was serving God, but I, I, I felt like I couldn't touch him like I wanted. And that was the roughest time for me. Hmm. I mean, I mean that, that, that right there was the hardest thing I ever went through in my life where, where I felt like I couldn't touch him. You know, and I, I mean, I give it all up. You know, if it, if it means I can't touch him, I, I got to feel him. Jesus. You know, and, and, and so I thank God for that. Yes. I thank God to be able Hallelujah. to feel his presence. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and, and, and that only comes through consecration. You know, um, even, I, 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 I make it a little bit more practical. Um, in our marriage, I'm with newlyweds, we've been married at this time less than a year. And, um, you know, we had our, our, our first little dispute. Um, and, and I remember like it was yesterday. We've been married for 37 years. Uh, and, you know, after we had a little dispute, you went in the room, in that little room, and um, you got on that little bed, um, and, and you put your head down, and you was crying. Tears were coming from your eyes. Sat there. Um, in that little kitchen at that little table. Um, and, you know, I, I was supposed to feel, you know, like I was the man. Because, you know, I, and you was in that room crying. And I said, man, you know, this don't feel right. You know, and um, I said, man, you know, we say, and I'm a preacher. I said, this don't feel right. And I went in that room and we sat down and we talked. Um, and we made a vow that day. Yes. We made a vow. That was 37 years ago. I hadn't been married for one year yet. We made a vow that day that we would never fight like that again. And 37 years later, we never fought mm -hmm. like that. That's right. See, That's right. But... But again, that, that, ain't, that didn't have nothing to do with prayer. It didn't have nothing to do with um, turning my plate upside down. It had everything to do with consecrating myself. Totally. Watch this, watch this. With a vow. Wow. With a vow. Then, then the vow now was the thing that held me account. And, it, and just, just, just as it was, just as it was, um, you know, for, for Samson. He had a, as a Nazarite, he had a vow. And the vow was his consecration. Mm -hmm. and, and the church is missing that. This, 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 this generation is missing those vows. Those vows will consecrate you. You know, when, when, when the preacher stands on the altar and, and, and pronounces a man and a woman, um, a husband and a wife, those vows consecrate the relationship. And so now, when they leave that altar and they go and consummate their marriage, that the thing that once, that, that, that once was sin hmm. is the thing that has now been sanctified. And God consecrates the union as they come to consummate it in love. And over here, before the vow, it was sin. Hmm. But with the vow, Glory to God. Glory. It becomes consecration. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. Wow. Let's see. Thank you, Jesus. Let me, let me get ready to try Thank to close you, this Jesus. lesson Thank because you, it's Jesus. starting to feel Thank too you, good Jesus. to me right now. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, and so, so um, when it comes to consecration, um, there are rules to, to, to consecration because the Bible says, sanctify yourself. Mm -hmm. Or consecrate yourself. The word sanctify means to set apart. And you remember, um, you know, back in the day when I went over to your mother's house and at my mom's house, Mother Shelby's house, and my grandmother's house, Mother Franklin's house. Uh, you don't see it today, but back in the day they would have um, china cabinets. Mm -hmm. Any of y'all know anything about china cabinets out there? Oh, yeah. You know, how, 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 how many people under the age of 40? that has a china cap. Only one hand out there, see? Amen, amen. And um, you have a china cabinet? Um, and do you live by yourself or do you live with your parents? I live with 
Okay, is it your china cabinet? Yes. You bought it? Mm -hmm. My man. Amen. You got dishes in it? Yes. My man. And so, and so um, back in the day, um, you, the china cabinet, those, those dishes in the china cabinet mm -hmm. were set apart. That's right. They, they were set apart. That's you, right. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't take a slice of pizza and warm it up <laughs> in the microwave with the I dishes in the right. china cabinet. Right. All right, and then the dishes in the china cabinet, you don't use those for Leroy and Shaquiqui um, and, uh, and Little Man when they come over for the, for, for on, on Sunday. You know, th those dishes in the china cabinet were set apart for special occasions. Yes. You know, special events. Yeah. All right, and, you know, and, and, and it was set apart, you know, for a special time. Just well, like, you know, just like our clothes. Yeah. Sunday, when you said that, how many of y'all remember Sundays? You had dress clothes. That's right. You had play clothes. And school clothes. And school clothes. You had and dress no. shoes. And, and, and also night clothes. <laughs> right, and night yeah, clothes. Yeah, because, because this generation, they sleep and they play clothes. Woo! Yeah. Say it, sir. Because you know when you got home on Sunday morning, what happened? They had to take, the had to take them dress clothes off and put your play clothes on. And your dress shoes, you only wore those to church and to the, to the special play at school. That's right. They were, they were set aside. That's right. <laughs> set aside. And, and, and that's what being consecrated means. To be consecrated means to be set aside for God's agenda. You're set aside for God's agenda. God um, is, is looking for a remnant, those who have been sanctified and set aside for his agenda. Um, and so... Um, three points. The consecration of God will interrupt your own plans. Mm. The consecration of God will interrupt your own plan. You know, I'm, I'm, you know I, I plan on going to the movies this week. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, you know, you know it, 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 it's my birthday weekend. Oh. Um, you know, um, you know, I, you know, I plan on, I plan on, you know, I'm hanging out with my, with my classmates and, um, and uh, oh. The consecration of God will, <laughs> will interrupt your, your plans. It will. And then the second thing, um, the consecration of God is inconvenient. It's wow. always inconvenient. God, I got to fast now? Yeah. Now, God, I got to get up and read my Bible now? God, I'm tired. God, oh, no, no, this is, this is your moment. This is, oh, God. It will, it, it's always inconvenient. Um, and then, then thirdly, the consecration of God um, it doesn't look for the easier route. Um, it looks for the route that is pleasing to God. Well, it looks for the yeah. route that is pleasing God because just as it was with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, sometimes the route that's pleasing to God is the long way mm -hmm. as opposed to the short way. And sometimes God will take you the long way. You're like, God, I got to go through the wilderness, God. Sometimes God will take you to the long way, amen, because, he's, because your consecration will cause you to um, miss out on some things that the enemy will try to do in your life. Um, so, <clears throat> I told you to turn to Joshua chapter 7, verse 13. We're getting ready to close this out. Amen. Um, because you probably want to invite me back after the day. No, yes, I am. All right. Joshua chapter 7, verse 13. Now, this, this, this is when Joshua was fighting um, Ai. Um, and the children of Israel was fighting Ai. He was leading um, the children of Israel in this battle. Um, and... God is, he, he, he's speaking to Joshua and he's telling them, you know, um, this is what you're going to have to do to have the ability to defeat the enemy. Wow. Yeah. And he's giving them the ability to defeat the enemy in this verse. It's a powerful verse powerful. for consecration. You need to listen to this. Joshua chapter 7, verse number 13. Read. Go consecrate the people. It says, go consecrate the people. Tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. says. Go consecrate the people. Tell them. People, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. Because tomorrow. consecration is preparation. Consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. What does he say? There are devoted things among you. He says there are devoted things among you. Israel. When you, when you, when you um, read the King James Version, King James um, says there are accursed things mm -hmm. among you. All right, um, 
New, New International Version says, there are devoted things among you. All right. The word devoted here means things that are devoted to destruction, not things devoted to good. This is telling us things that are devoted to destructions. He says, there are things among you that are devoted to your destruction. Wow. All right. Read. Your, you cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them. He says, he says, now, I need you to consecrate yourself. And I need you to tell the people, Joshua, not only must you be consecrated, but you got to tell the people to be consecrated because this battle that they're about to go in, this, 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 this enemy that they're going to fight, um, if they are going to win this battle, then they're going to have to obey these instructions. Instruction number one, consecrate yourself. Instruction number two, tell them to remove anything that's devoted to destruction in their life. And if they don't remove those things that are, that are devoted to destruction in their life, then they will not defeat this enemy. Mm. They will not defeat this enemy. Until they do this, I don't care how many times they fight AI. Thank you, Jesus. And AI might be smaller than them, weaker than them, but unless they do this, remove the accursed thing from amongst them, they're not going to be able to, to defeat this enemy. Now, this is a powerful scripture because this scripture is letting us know how valuable our consecration is. He says, until you remove them. So, so the one thing that can, that can stand or, or cause you um, to not to be able um, to defeat your enemy is to have things in your life that are devoted to destruction. Mm. Things in your life. Things, it, could, it could be the music you listen to. Um, you know, it, it, it can it can, it can be um, it could be the clothes that you wear. This is all consecration. Hey, well, we're back, and I know you enjoyed that ministry moment. So I want you to stay tuned and join us next week for Benita. And remember that God makes everything beautiful in His time. Hey everybody, are you enjoying the Bonita Show? Well, I'd like for you to consider sponsorship and becoming a partner with us to take this worldwide. Please connect on BonitaAndreaShelby.com and all of my social media platforms. And every contribution that you give will help us to keep this on the air and to take it worldwide.